YouTube, Tuesday, June 6th. Um, so, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Fridays are heavy lifting days. So Tuesday, Thursday, we do either do mobility, stretching, etc. Um, we're gonna start adding in hard body conditioning uh, now. So I'll show you guys what we usually do for hard body. Just regular traditional looking stuff. Like our last vlog, like I didn't, I felt super unmotivated to do any of it. <laughs> but then some of the comments were like, keep the vlog going. Oh my yeah. god. So, like, I guess. <laughs> it's someone out there watching us. Oh, so for the online thing, I was thinking about it last night. <laughs> like, it's a database of techniques separated by their, their cutters and also styles. So then it's like, it's universal, right? So you're like, oh, I'm a Shotokan guy. I'm a Shotokan, Hyun, Shodan. First movement, Hyun, Shodan. And then we have like the applications for that, right? So it's a whole database. And then they're paying for that database and then they're paying for like weekly updates, maybe personal drills or partner drills that we're gonna show. So benefits of having a strong neck, um, other than being able to pivot around on, on the ground is actually to prevent getting knocked out, right? Because it's your head that jars back and forth that makes your brain hit your skull, that makes you get that flash knockout. So if you can protect that with a very strong neck, then uh, you're less likely to have that happen. So conditioning your neck is a vital thing for anyone who trains a com combative that is sports and martial arts. Wednesday, June 7th. So we just finished a uh, deadlift routine. So now Aaron's doing some spinal decompression. Just hang a belt by a bar and then put it around your waist and then invert yourself. So it's stretching out the lower spine. That way you don't feel so tight in that area. No gi and gloves, you must be training MMA. This is like a uh, reset. So Alex, when you're on top of half, posture up and just start wailing. You're not trying to flatten him out anymore, right? It's a different game when strikes are involved. Recover and reset. Hey YouTube, Friday, June 9th. So we were asked about the mechanics of the proper side snap kick uh, with emphasis on the pivoting leg. So, so the pivoting leg is all about turning your body's alignment towards the direction you're kicking, right? So for example, if I'm doing a side snap kick like that, right? So my pivoting leg has my heel 
of the pivoting leg has to turn all the way to face where I'm going to kick. So if I'm facing the floor, the front, notice how the bottom leg is pointed towards there. And what's going to help with the snap is if you're trying to snap in place versus trying to snap in and uh, make up a distance, right? So if I'm just snapping in place, it's as if I'm just like putting out a cigarette. That's kind of the analogy. Or digging my ball of my foot into the ground here, right? But if I'm trying to go for distance, um, think of it like a sprint. I always think about the balls of my feet sprinting towards the direction I'm going. That's going to extend my leg and make me land forward, right? So let me see if I can slow motion this. So as you saw from the slow motion, it's actually the pivoting of the foot goes before every, even the, the kicking leg goes out, right? So it's kind of like a, like a springboard going forward. I need to pivot before this leg shoots out. So a good drill to do is actually just doing that, working on the pivoting and moving the hip horizontally across before you even throw, extend the leg out here. Notice how all I'm focusing on is that, that twist. And it's going to get you a lot more snap in your kick here before you even think about throwing the kick. Another detail is driving hard with the, the kicking knee. So as you drive more with the knee, it's gonna pull more for your foot. That's going to make you want to twist more with your, the ball of your foot, right? So instead of just lifting this leg up, trying to snap my, trying to twist my feet, I'm going to pull and that's going to drive this foot to the pivot. So let me see if I can slow motion that. We were also asked about explosiveness, developing explosiveness for karate. So that all goes into your calves and your hips. So you could do uh, hill sprints, uh, sprints, regular sprints, ladders or stairs, um, long jumps, box jumps, things that develop that type of explosiveness, high jumps, like stuff like burpees. Um, for the hips, I think I did uh, the previous vlog or a couple vlogs back where I showed different hip, hip engagement drills. And one other key thing that's, that's missed out a lot is alignment. So if you guys watch uh, point sparring for karate, most people have this type of, this type of lunging stance, right? But what you don't notice a lot is the back foot. So this helps for uh, self-defense as well, right? So if I'm trying to sprint forward from this stance and my foot is facing this way, I'm going to not have as much of a spring as if my foot were facing this way, like a sprinter, right? So if I'm here, I'm trying to throw a kick and I'm trying to push off like this, it's not going to be the same as throwing a kick like that, right? Here. So that's why you want to think about correct body alignment. So if you see my foot facing this way versus my foot facing this way, you're able to sprint towards the direction you want to go a lot easier if your body's aligned towards that direction. In a self-defense situation, same thing, right? So if you're taking a force, you want to have this foot kind of out here. That way it kind of takes the brunt of the force. But if you're trying to shoot in, it would make sense to switch this to that. That way you can dash forward, right? So here to here. Plus it makes your hips straight forward more rather than to the side. You can see how to the side can take impact better because you can redirect or you can brace yourself. But if you want to lunge forward, it makes sense to do this. And that's a key detail that a lot of people miss. It's always the back foot. 